Hey y'all, it's your boy Dark Honest Duh, and today, baby, I'm gonna be showing y'all how I do my fills and all the tools, tools that you will need to do a fill as well. You know what? It's you know, it's a really quick tutorial. If anything, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and subscribe for a bad yaddy yaddy and share because sharing is the only channel that we like in this household. Okay, if anything, let's go ahead and get into this video, baby. Let's go. Alright y'all, so I decided that I wanted to come on camera and just kind of show you guys how I do my feels. Now as you can see, um, this hand and also these three fingers are bald as hell. So the first part of doing a nail feel is to remove the, you know, polish for before. So you can use, ooh, shaking the, I done shook the camera. <laughs> So you can either use a hand file. This is a 180 grit. This is washable. So that means you can reusable. Reuse it. So this is the 100 and this is the 180. Period. So that's that. I also like to have a nipper tool just in case I need to nip away some of the lifting parts. Like when you do acrylic, sometimes you do get lifting which I like to use this to kind of go under and take that off. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I like to use a e-file. If anything, this e-file is by Allies. And I do have quite a bit of drill bits. But the one I like to use is the sanding drill bit. And this is the one, this is the 180. Right, this is the 180 one. I also have a 150, but I usually use the 180s. With the with the e files, you do want to be very careful with these because you want to try to start off on a low setting or start off on a setting that you can handle. You don't want to just jump into the highest setting because you know I don't need I don't need you messing up your nails and be like dark. Well, dark and say I can do it now, baby. Use it if you know how to. You know, period. And then most importantly, you need a mask. I'm wearing a yellow mask because, I mean, that's the color I'm wearing today. So, that's that because, you know, the acrylic powder just flies everywhere. You want to make sure you are protecting yourself and you don't want to be breathing that in. And also wear eyewear as well. And, yeah, let's get into it. So, this is one of the plug-in e-files. They do have the non-cordless ones. I don't really like those as well because they can be shoddy. Because sometimes, because you're going to be doing a lot of fouling, they can, um, kind of, the power just kind of goes down gradually and it doesn't give as much of a fine spin because, it's, you know, the battery is slowly going down. So you have to worry about that. So I just got to plug in one side and have to worry about this. So with this one, it has a reverse. This The I is for off and then F is for forward. So it can either spin that way or that way, depending on your preference. I always like to do mines on forward. And this little part right here is how you control the speed. That's the lowest setting. And that's the highest. So you can kind of hear it. I like to start from the lowest and then move it up just a little. Right. And these are kind of quiet, so you don't have to worry about it. And then I just kind of start from the tip. Backwards and forwards. You want to use your thumb, not your thumb, but your pinky as leverage underneath that to kind of hold that nail in place. So I'm just kind of going backwards and forwards. Then I like to go all the way down the sides. You can do this with a regular file too. You just want to make sure that it is 180. Now when you're using the e-file, it's very important that you keep it moving. You do not want to hold it in one spot because that's how you create friction which can cause heat so it might burn so don't do that <laughs> so I'm just starting the that part All right I always like to do the tips first and then clean up the sides and then I do this you can do the backwards and forwards all the way you can do like the backwards and forwards all the way back I don't like to do that, to be honest. I feel like you'll find your way, especially when you're doing your own nail. You'll kind of find what works for you. This is just what works for me, okay? 
But yeah, I like to use my pinky as leverage. Okay, okay. But you do want to be very careful with this um, too. It can snatch your skin off and nobody got time for you to be in a hospital. Okay. So please use this at your own risk. Okay. If you feel like you don't trust yourself with it, don't use it. I've been using these for quite a bit. Then I like to kind of file down the part closest to the cuticle so you can kind of see here. You know, it's kind of showing that part that grew out. This set is only a week old, so it's not going to show as much. And then, bam, that's pretty much that. Let's go ahead and do a thumb too. So, let's start off with the tip. Now, as far as for this, this is how you can kind of start off doing it. And then, you can create your own little way to do it for yourself. You know? So yeah, if anything, I don't really have too much of a topic for this video. I really don't. Oh yeah, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I know Mother's Day just recently passed. So happy Mother's Day. Um, we'll be late at Mother's Day. Hopefully you guys had a good day. I um, cooked dinner for my mother and then I also made a uh, homemade cheesecake but I did like cheesecake bites and yeah and then I got her a gift so yeah mine is very successful All right and to be honest I'm filming this on Mother's Day because you know we did most of that like towards like the evening time so around like one o'clock So yeah, they didn't, they didn't, you know, made them a little, a little to-go plates and stuff, and they didn't, she didn't went on home. So now I'm just doing my nails. Now when you're doing this part, sometimes it is some of the nail is gonna kind of come off. Now when you get into the part where it's fouling and you're getting closer to your, like to your natural nail, you do want to be very careful because you don't want to cause any burns. So yeah, that's pretty much that part. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Now I like to go in with this nipper tool and just kind of go, you know, just kind of lift up and take off the parts that are kind of lifted. Now you don't want to force anything. Right, never force it. Sometimes you don't even have to worry about your nails lifting. Sometimes you do. I'm very hard on nails, so sometimes I do get a lot of lifting. So I do have to do that. But yeah, you want to make sure you're not, you know, lifting it yourself. If it's not lifted, don't lift it, okay? But yeah, I generally don't have too much lifting as far as for that. To know if you have lifting, just press your nail down like that and you'll see it bend up a little. So these are, these are all good. So now we're done with that. I'm going to take the kombuki brush and just kind of clean it off first. Then this one takes off. These, um, these little drill bits, they are universal so you can use them with any drill bit. You know, period. And that's that. So now... I'm going to go in with this one, which is kind of like a slimmer. This is a plastic drill bit. And I'm going to use that to clean up the cuticle area. Because this one doesn't cause as much burning, or it doesn't really cause burning at all. So it lets me get all the way up in there without worrying about hurting myself. Because you do want that cuticle to lay flat. 
And depending on like how you how well you do it, sometimes you don't even have to like do a. Uh, sometimes the feel isn't necessary, especially if your nails don't really grow in that much. My new nails do grow, so this is pretty much this is a week's worth of growth. Then I also like to kind of take down the shape if I need to too, because sometimes I do make them a little thicker. And also, you want to make sure this part is flat up against the. Uh... Alright, see that? We got some lifting right there. So, that's why we use that to kind of expose that extra lifting. So, I'm just going to turn that off. Take the nipper tool and try to get right there. Bam. And we're gonna turn this back on. Ooh, got it dropped it low. <laughs> don't do that, y'all. Don't do that. Then just use that to kind of just flatten it out. Trying to stay in frame from y'all. I might have to bring the camera a little closer. Let me move, move it like that so y'all can see. Sometimes I do like to bring it a little closer to myself. If it seems blurry, it's because, you know, this lighting plus the black towel is going to make that look less. And pretty much you're just going to do that for all the rest of the nails. So I'm going to do the rest of the nails and we're going to come back and get into the acrylic part. Alright, so now that we done went ahead and we did the rest of these, I filed these off camera. So pretty much when you're doing the fill, once you do the cuticle part and you take off the extra part that's lifted and whatever, then you're going to just kind of refine the shape, whatever shape you do. Since I'm doing the stilettos, I'm going to be staying true to that. So, what I do is I just take the 100-180 and I just kind of just hit the sides, get that shape refined. Then I like to kind of go down the sides like that, just so it's kind of rounded all the way and there's no like weird square angles. So that's how I do mine as far as for that. If you're doing a coffin shape, then you'll just be refining a coffin shape, you know. I also like the go under the nail as well to break up any parts that are like showing right break up any parts or whatever but yeah you want to make sure that it's like round all the way around this part so when you look down the nails you see that it's all round there's no like cliff or anything so yeah that's pretty much as far as for that part just refining the shape or perfecting the shape until you get it to pretty much where you like it this part is very easy All right this is the easy part this also makes polish putting on polish a lot easier too And now we're doing the last nail. So mainly this video is just going to be about um, just feels. And the next video is going to be the actual polish. Also, when it comes to feels, you really shouldn't be paying that much to get your nails, feel, your nails filled. You know, feels really shouldn't really be that much. Because honestly, they're not really using a lot of products. They're barely using any products at all, unless they're putting a polish on top, which the most you'll probably spend for a feel or should spend for a feel is $25. Like a new set will be around 50 plus, depending on the shop you go to. So yeah. So bam. 
Now we've refined the shape and I just kind of file it to how I like it. Now we're just going to get into the acrylics. Let's get into the acrylic part. All right, y'all, so we're back. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm sipping on some, some Chardonnay right now. So we're just doing the fill process with the fills. The reason why it shouldn't cost that much because you're really not using that much product. So they should be filling it with whatever color they use or a nude. So I'm just going to use a smaller bead than what I got and I'm just going to push it, kind of coax it into these parts that needs to be filled and then blend it down. And that's literally all a fill is. You're using the littlest amount of product whatsoever. Placing it there and then smoothing it out. You know? Bam, like that. All right. Some some um some nails you won't have to put as much and some you will. thing I hate about Louisiana is these damn gnats. And gnats are like so gnats are really drawn to wine so it's kind of irritating. I really just be trying to just draw just try to enjoy a little piece of wine and here comes these damn gnats trying to get up in my glass. Then they end up drowning themselves because apparently they can't swim which if you're going to be a dick you're gonna be attracted to some at least know how to swim right that's just me that's just me yeah I gonna even lie for the for a little while I thought my house was haunted until I looked into it and apparently gnats are a good almond an omen for change so yes yeah, when you're doing the fill, you're just using the littlest amount. Littlest amount whatsoever. You're not putting too much, and it's all about blending it to into the rest of the nail. And you see, baby, see how that's going together? You see, this one has a lot more part that you have to do, so you'll get like a a bigger bead. I do need to get some of this um, nude powder. This nude acrylic powder. So I am running low on that. Oops. Just blend that down. Just blend it down like that, like so. Oh, yeah. Right. I love doing fills because they're a lot more quicker than doing a whole set. Which sometimes I do do a whole set. It just depends on the nails. I'm probably going to be doing a whole set um, here soon. A whole new set. But it's going to be with, you know, with poly gel is what I'm going to be using. So I'll be switching from acrylic to poly gel. So that's that's something that I'm gonna be looking for too. Bam. And you wanna make sure you're getting every corner that needs it. It has to all blend together. Okay. All right. Each time you go into the acrylic, just make sure that you are washing your brush off. And pretty much washing your brush means that... Oh, God. This is why you don't want to wait until you get to the end. Because you start getting that acrylic to start stick up in there. Just 
kind of push it to the corners like that. And then you blend that bad boy down. That's what I'm saying, it's really simple. It really is. Right, it's even easier to do on other people. You don't have to worry about, you know, trying to see it. It's very easy to see. Okay. Very easy to see. I'm just going to kind of push it into that cuticle, but not all the way. Blend it down. Sometimes you'll have to do more than one bead. It just depends. Right. Especially for the thumb, you'll have to do probably a little more. Or you can just use a bigger bead. It also depends on how quick you are. See, my acrylic is the fast setting one. So, you know, I do have to make sure that I am working pretty fast. It's not, it's going to look really weird, really quick. Right. But yeah. If anything, the smoother you get this, the easier it will be when you are fouling. Because then you don't have to do so much fouling. So make sure when you are doing your feel, you're doing it like really good. A really good feel is, if you do a really good feel... You don't really have to worry about doing so much filing at the end because it's just going to fall into the rest of the shape. And plus, we already pre-shaped the nails. The only part that really needs to be, like, touched up. Right. You know what I'm saying? The only part that needs to be touched up is this part. And that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much that for the fill part. Um... So now I'm just going to file the nails. We're going to give this time to dry. Now when I'm filing my nails, I like to use just a regular file because I feel like it's easier to use the manual file versus the um, the e-file. Because I feel like with the manual file, you do have a little, a little more control. So that's just my preference. I mean, you'll kind of find your your preference once you kind of play around with the e-file and the hand file and you'll know which is which now what I do is I do have leftover monomer I just add acetone to it and then I so let my brush soak into it to kind of get that excess you know powder out of there that's just what I do and I feel like that helps to keep my brushes from building up any product that is left behind and yeah, as far as for this, if you are doing nails at home, make sure that you're using a closed, make sure you're disposing of these in a closed off track with a trash can with a lid. You don't want to put these in an open trash can. The trash can has to have a lid or I mean, if you want your house to smell like that all day, then hey, that's your business. But that's that. So now... We didn't did that part, and we're just gonna get into filing. Take a little sip of this Chardonnay. This Chardonnay was an accidental purchase. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't even really like Chardonnay like that, cause you have to keep it at a certain temperature. But this one's pretty good, so I'm just gonna put on my mask, and yeah. I like to use this part of the nail and just kind of do that like that. And then if I need to, I'll do the sides if they need to be kind of like shaped up. But mostly, mostly you just kind of just shaping up the top part. Also, by doing your, um, if you do this, the, like your feel good or well, you don't even really have to clean up, which as you can see, I don't really have to do too much cleaning up. I'm just kind of 
just filing it just a little to just get the shape together. You honestly shouldn't have to do too much, right? Like at all. Just kind of clean up the sides. And then if you need to kind of level the top, then that's when you kind of go around and just level the top off like that, like so. So that is your preference, if anything. Because at first I used to use the e-file to do this pr process, but sometimes the e-file can just be a little too much. It just gives me a little too much power, even on the low setting. And sometimes if it's not like slow enough, it'll cause like dips in your nails. You don't want your nails to be dipping, you know. You know, I dip, you dip, we dip, but your nail ain't supposed to dip, okay? That's just tea. That is just tea. But yeah, that's that's just my preference. I feel like this is a lot easier for me to control, making sure the shape be shaping, okay? Maybe if I get some old years of that e-file under me, then I'll be a little better. But right now, this is like what I do. Now, other people, it's easier to use the e-file, but on myself, it's easier to use this. Period. And then, yeah, you do this for that, too. Kind of. Shape it. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these off camera. And then I'm going to buff the nails. I'm going to buff these nails and then wash my hands. And we're just going to get into the end of this video, okay? Okay, so I will see you there, y'all. All right, y'all. So that's pretty much it. That's how you do a feel. It's really quick and simple. And to be honest, you really shouldn't be paying any more than $30 to get a fill did. And, you know, even with color, fill shouldn't cost that much because it's really not taking that long or that much product. If anything, y'all, y'all check out the video that's going to be posted after next, you know, next week video after this one. I'm going to be actually showing y'all the style I'm going to be doing. I'm doing kind of like a trendy you can say trendy French tip design with two different colors. So stay tuned for that. If anything, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, subscribe for that Eddie Eddie and share because you know sharing is caring and that's the only type of caring we like in this household, okay? Anyways, come on, Dark Hunters. Cut me to the end script. Let's go. Peace.